Special guest, um, Angela Hobby with Wiregrass Technical College is going to talk to us about the dual enrollment program. Ms. Hobby? I need to stand. <laughs> 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 Um, well, I was actually going to talk to you guys about our dual enrollment program, which of course is the programs we offer to high school students um, where they earn high school and college credit at the same time. And this is way more information than you need, but I was working on some year-end reports for everybody else, and I figured y'all are a lot of data-driven people, so there's a lot of um, broken down um, information about what we do and how we do it in this information. But the very first page is really a quick overview. Um, and we see dual enrollment um, and how it ties into economic development is really is like the first step that we can do to try to encourage students to stay in the area to um, earn, you know, to go through an educational, higher educational program and stay here and work here. So we kind of feel like this is their first opportunity to see what it's like to go into that post-secondary education, whether it's with us, with BSU, or of course military. Um, they have a lot of opportunities out there that we wish more students would take advantage of. Um, so. Just to give you an idea, right now we just finished a course, well we're in the process of finishing this year. We had um, 1,569 or duplicated high school students take classes with us, which equals out to a little over 1,000 um, unduplicated. So that's a lot of high school students. In fact, it's about 25% of our actual college enrollment is high school students right now. Um, with that said, the reason that we have such a high percentage is you're eligible to take college classes through a variety of programs. Um, the Wiregrass is actually four programs and they do this for free. There's no cost whatsoever involved. So they um, they can earn college credits while in high school. We waive their fees, we pay for their books, um, we pretty much provide everything for them and the classes don't count against their hope, they count towards their um, rigor requirements to graduate high school, and they count towards their um, rigor requirements to be eligible for the hope scholarship when they graduate high school. So there's a lot of benefits to taking classes while you're in high school. The other huge benefit is um, that if they're taking degree level four classes with us, those classes will transfer to most universities like BSU. We have quite a few who do that while they're in high school and then move on to BSU. Um, in fact, I was looking at a list today of where we had students transferring once they graduate um, this May and where they're going. They're kind of going all over the place. But they're earning college credits for free while they're in high school that they can put towards their degrees, which means we're going to get students graduating with their degrees a lot sooner instead of spending six, seven, eight years in college, and hopefully they'll be coming back to work in our communities. Um, the other thing is that besides the degree programs, the core level is the occupational, which is the skills-based training that we do. Um, one of the sheets in here we'll get to in a second sort of shows you a breakdown of what the students are actually taking and what they're interested in and what we're offering to them. There's a couple of things that are going to happen over the next year. Um, you can, I'm not going to read all of this to you, but another highlight on this front page is that this year there was some legislation that got voted in um, that's going to change the way we do dual enrollment for high school students, which is actually going to benefit and open up the doors for even more students to do it. I think it's going to help us um, reach even more students at a younger age and encourage them to get high school credit or get college credit while in high school. Um, and I put a little synopsis of what those two bills are down here in the corner. Um, the first one is Senate Bill 2, which basically says that beginning July 1st, high school students who earn two Carnegie units in English, Math, History, and Science at their high school are eligible to move on to a technical college as long as they complete either two technical certificates, a diploma program, or an associate degree with a technical college. If they do one of those three things, then they earn their high school <coughs> diploma and college credit at the same time. So essentially, we could have more students completing high school and college programs by the time they're 17 years old. Um, so that's going to kind of change sort of the landscape of what some of our, our high school students are doing and the opportunities that are open for them. Of course, there are a few, you know, things that we've got to work out details for, and, um, and not every program a student's going to be eligible because you do have to be 18 in some areas to even get into the field of work, so it depends on what the program is. They may still need to wait, you know, a little bit longer. Um, so we're worried. There's still a lot of details to be worked out with that one. The other one, Senate Bill 132, actually, I mentioned a minute ago that we have four ways a high school student can take classes with us. The way that's set up now, the, there's different funding for each of those four ways that's provided by the state. Basically, the state said it's too confusing, let's roll it all into one. So we now have one 
way to fund high school students to be able to take um, courses with us. And so it just kind of, we used to have dual Excel, joint, move on, ready. Now they're all called the same thing. So it'll all be move on when ready. They can still um, take one or two classes with us. Most of, a lot of what we do is we go into the high schools and if there's a career pathway that the high school teaches, um, then we partner with them on that career pathway and we help complete that pathway and provide them additional training or certification with that pathway. For instance, um, most high schools offer um, a health pathway. We'll go in and do um, a nurse aid course which helps them become certified to be nurse aides if they want to. That's a really good course for students who think they want to go into the medical field and do more than just be you know, even a nurse or go in to be a physician or something, it helps them really see right from the beginning whether or not they want to be in that field. So they figure it out while they're in high school and not when they're four years into a college degree and decide to change their mind. You know, so it kind of helps them decide early on what, what they want to do. But we do, we partner with the high schools um, about what their career pathway programs are and we try to offer programs that match that. Any questions so far? Because I said a lot. Really yeah, I have, I have a couple of questions. Um, one, just one observation. In the upper right corner, mm -hmm. I think you mean against Hope Scholarship? Yes, sorry. It's, it does not count against our Hope Scholarship. Thank you. Okay. But, but that's, my, here's my question. In terms of students who take an academic track, and they graduate from college at 18 or 19. How are we preparing these kids at that juncture to deal with the real world? And if they want to go to graduate school, usually there's some requirement that they have some real world experience. How's that incorporated into this type of curriculum? Well, for us, um, at the technical college level, we do, of course, we work on the work ethics. We do our work ethics program. I'm not sure if you're familiar with work ethics in the technical college system. Part of every course that we offer, students not only get an academic grade, but they get a work ethics grade, which is based on their attendance, their participation in class, their teamwork, their communication skills, um, and those sorts of things. There's 10 areas that they're graded on, and we actually work with them on those areas so that they're um, not just attending in class. You know, we have attendance requirements. We have certain requirements in all of our classes that they have to be in addition to the academic rigor of the courses. Um, so that's one way. Um, and you actually bring up a good point because with the move on, with the new <coughs> legislative changes, we're expecting to see a lot more younger students completing their programs early on and being eligible to, to go to work or go on to a, um, a graduate program. Well, they would have, they have to move on to someone like ESU to get their bachelor's first because we only do two years sure. associate's degree. So they still have two years, at least two years at university. Um, that actually has just come up for us pretty big. Um, one of the things we're looking at is, is what else are we going to do for that student development side? Because to be quite honest right now, we focus mostly on the technical skills and the academics because we are a two-year. Um, we don't have dorms and that kind of thing. Whereas most universities, and Mary can speak to this, when you have dorms or you have residence life, you have a portion of your staff that really focuses on student development as a whole and not just the academic side. So that is an area that we are looking into um, to see what we need to do because I agree with you. We actually just had this discussion last week about this because we do get younger and younger students. Um, the other thing is, is we do provide career services. We do work with all of our students when they're in their last semester of graduation to help them find job placement. We do more than just find, help them find job placement. We work with them on their interview skills um, how they're supposed to dress, how they're supposed to act, and, and, and reiterate those work ethic skills that they need when they actually go on the job. And then the other thing we do is we have started incorporating, um, most of our programs now require an internship. So even if they're in that high school program, they're still going to get some um, on-the-job experience through an internship program. Okay. And, and my, my final question is, is there any kind of standardized testing requirement to see that these kids are able to function at the collegiate level. Before they come to us? Yes. yes. They have to meet our regular admission scores, which would be either provide SAT scores or ACT scores um, that we require for all of our students. Um, we actually have two sets of scores. One would be for your associate degree level courses, and the other set of scores are a little bit lower for the diploma and technical um, skills-based programs. We have those two options, or we do an entrance exam called the Compass Test, which is a standardized test um, that a lot of colleges use um, also in place of the SAT or ACT. And they have to meet those scores in order to get in. Angela, what's your current job placement? 
number. Um, in field job placement, meaning that once they graduate, they're in you know the field that they study is 87 percent. Overall job placement, which includes whether or not they're continuing their education, is at 97 percent. Um, so I'm just going to kind of highlight what's on the next couple pages and if you have questions. What I wanted to really kind of show, because, um, and I'm sure you guys talk about this a lot when you're talking about the industries that are coming in, that it's not really just Lowndes County, but it's, you've got so many commuters who are coming in from the surrounding counties to work at these industries and stuff. So we actually touch 11 counties in South Georgia and currently we work with our high school programs, we work with 19 high schools. So that second page actually shows you um, kind of a breakdown of the enrollment we have from area high schools um, to tell you, to show you a little bit about just how far our reach is in, in providing these programs to high school students. So we work with each one of these high schools to provide specific programs for what they, that high school would like for us to work with them on. Um, so again, that's just kind of an overview. The second one after that, the next chart, is um, a breakdown of the difference between what we call Excel and dual enrollment. Excel is when a student takes the degree level four courses with the intentions of moving on to complete an associate degree or a bachelor's degree at a um, four-year university, some, um, usually within the state of Georgia. So we divide those up. The dual enrollment are your occupational programs that we partner up with the career pathways in the high school. So you can kind of see um, what percentage of our students are going into the occupational side and what percent are, are um, working on those degree level full courses. And then the next one um, is a breakdown of the programs that the students have, are actually in. And this will show you kind of the areas of interest um, that we most of our students are, are coming into and this is what the schools have asked us to work with them on. I can tell you that one of the things like Megan and I have talked about several times and actually we were just discussing is we have um, a really difficult time, and I would love suggestions, on um, convincing students that programs such as our basic mechatronics or certified manufacturing are programs that they should look into and that they should consider doing. It's like basic mechatronics is a pre-engineering program. So it is the courses that a student can take if they were considering going on to Southern Polytech, Georgia Southern or any of these schools that do engineering. It's mechanical based engineering for the most part. So we have a really hard time explaining to students what this is and, and what, what their job opportunities are locally. So if you have suggestions, because these are areas that I know are a huge need for companies you know, that we have here locally that they're having a hard time filling um, those positions. And these are the things that we would really like to figure out how we can can get high school students, you know, somebody who's 16, 17 years old to understand that there is, there's really good job potential in these areas. So, um, so this kind of gives you an idea of the programs that we teach. You know, I have questions about any of those. Why couldn't you call it pre-engineering? Because the state sets the program standard names. And you have to call it something as? Basic mechatronics. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I agree. I do. Um, it's actually a statewide. <laughs> it is actually it's a statewide program that um, the governor sort of has been pushing for us at the technical college system, and for whatever reason, that that's the program, the name they chose. The, there's another one that's even more confusing to me. There's one called technical specialist down at the bottom. That's yeah. actually nothing but associate degree level four classes. So it's all four classes that lead to an associate degree or that you use to move on to a bachelor's program. But it's called technical specialist and that's what the state chose for the name. What is institutionally accepted? <laughs> institutionally admitted, that's actually those students who are only there to take the degree level four classes. We don't always put them in a program. Um, okay. so, yeah. Other. Other? <laughs> yes. That's the, that is. That's the other. Um, and then the last sheet, real, it takes our enrollment and kind of breaks it down a little bit more by high school. And you'll notice in the column, the very first column that says the high school's name, it tells you what, according to DOE, their actual high school population is for this past year. So you can kind of see, um, based on their high school population, how many students percentage-wise that we're, you know, that we're working with and training. Now, another thing I'd like to add is these students don't come to us. In most cases, we go to them. We actually teach 
the courses that we offer in most cases on their high school campus. So we send our instructors, our faculty, out to these 19 high schools. Um, Valdosta High School, we do a combination of both. Valdosta High School actually had um, decided last year, we work with them, they bus their students to us, and in Coffee County High School and their Career Academy, in some cases they bus them to us and some we teach them on campus. It depends on the program and the equipment. Sometimes it's easier for them if we can work out transportation to come to us because the equipment is such an issue and trying to duplicate that equipment on a high school is difficult. For instance, welding programs, it's expensive and difficult to duplicate a welding lab on a high school if they don't already have one. So in some cases we may have them come to us. Um, but you know, that just kind of gives you an idea of, of how we do this program. We also have some unique partnerships with schools where we actually do some unique um, teaching instruction. They don't just get one class per semester or per period. Um, we, we have different um, models for how we teach the courses. So in some cases they're getting three college classes in one semester, in some cases they're getting two. It, it just it varies from high school to high school. Any other questions? Or anything you would like to know? <laughs> Thank you. Thank you, Andrew. I just like to say, you know, obviously Wiregrass is a very huge asset for our community and for our workforce, up and coming workforce, existing workforce. Um, and we're very thankful for our partnership with you guys. Thank you for inviting us. Thank you. And we appreciate all that you program. do as well. Thank you.